Beloved brothers and sisters, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us this opportunity to meet in this beautiful house of His. And we ask the Almighty to make it a means of acceptance for all of us. For indeed, getting to the house of the Almighty on a blessed day of Friday is an act that is obligatory upon us. My beloved brothers, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who can prepare very early in the morning on a Friday and who can take pride in our beliefs and our religion and who can arrive very early at the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for indeed every Friday there is a competition that takes place with the angels at the doors of every masjid writing down the names of those who are entering the masjid first and then the next let us try and make sure that we are amongst the top now and again we ask the Almighty to grant us goodness. Brothers and sisters, if this was the last day that you had to live, what would you do? That is a question I ask myself and yourselves. Think for a moment, if you were told that this is your last day, what is it that you would do right now? The first thing I would do is declare my faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and repent for my wrongdoings. For indeed, the declaration of faith is something that is far more heavy on the scale than anything else. There are so many narrations, one of them makes mention of a man who will come on the day of judgment with 99 files full of evil and they will be put on the scale and all those evil deeds will be on the scale. He would look and think that there is absolutely no hope and as he is imagining that this would be his doom, suddenly a little card comes out of one of the files. And the card has on it the inscription of La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon all the messengers that he has sent to us. This inscription would bear witness that this man had uttered these words with complete conviction once in his life. And thereafter the Almighty will instruct that that card be placed on the other side of the scale as a good deed. And do you know what? It will tip the scale and it will eclipse the 99 files, each one of them from the east to the west. This hadith is known as Hadithul Bitaqa. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to have hope in His mercy and at the same time to fear His wrath and His punishment. Brothers and sisters, it is a narration of this sort that gives us hope and makes us repeat this declaration time and again ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh if we are used to repeating this declaration several times a day the day that is definitely our last day we would perhaps utter it as the last term before we leave the world and the narration says Whomsoever has uttered La ilaha illallah as the last words before they leave shall enter paradise. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that opportunity and may He accept us for those blessed words. So make it your habit and I should make it mine to repeat these words not merely by tongue but to lead our lives in a way that inshallah we will also be able to uphold the values of the very statement that we are uttering. There is no point in a person declaring that he believes that Muhammad, may peace be upon him, is the messenger. Yet, his life is totally void of the teachings of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Each one of us, my brothers and sisters, should make a very big effort on a daily basis to improve ourselves. Nobody is perfect. Each one of us have involved in some sort of sin, minor or major. May Allah forgive us. May He protect us from major sin and may He make us more conscious of minor sin. Each one of us is trying our best to improve. Remember, if this was your last day, you would cancel all appointments of sin that you might have made. And this may just be your last day. This would mean that anyone whom, out of the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the love for Him, cancels any of their sinful appointments or deeds, they would definitely earn the pleasure of the Almighty. He becomes happy with them. Who knows, there could be a deed that one had planned to do, which was so accessible to that particular person. And solely because of the Almighty and the consciousness of the Almighty, they decided to cancel the deed. Who knows, Allah might look at that cancellation and grant such a person paradise. Take a look at the hadith 
which makes mention of seven categories of people who will be granted a special shade on the day of Qiyamah, a special shade on the day of judgment. They will be the VIPs of the day of judgment when we have scorching heat, more scorching than the city of Kuwait this afternoon. We will be having such heat and yet the beautiful feeling of such an air condition today is so good that when we walk into the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we forget about the heat outside. So imagine if we are granted a special shade and a special place on the day of judgment. Well, there are seven categories that are made mention of from amongst those who will be getting that particular shade. May Allah make us from at least one of those categories. From amongst them is a man who was invited to commit adultery by a woman who was very good looking, of high social standing and perhaps economic standing as well, of high lineage without any form of barrier in the sense that it was very easily facilitated. The prophecy was there. The facilitation was there. Nothing stopped him from engaging in adultery besides the fact he says, Inni Allah, I fear Allah. So Allah says, such a man deserves my shade on the day of judgment. He deserves this VIP standing on the day of judgment. My brothers and sisters, this means if you cancel a sin, or if you abstain from it solely because you are conscious of your maker, he will grant you something good in return, something that will definitely make you smile the day that everyone else will be frowning. May Allah protect us. So brothers and sisters, we repent, we ask Allah's forgiveness as well. If this was my last day, I would constantly repent throughout the day. Take a look at Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wherein the narrations make mention of how he used to repent 70 times a day. And some narrations say, up to 100 times a day he used to repent and ask Allah's forgiveness. Yet my brothers and sisters, he did not commit sin. He was protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he engaged in istighfar, asking Allah's forgiveness, Oh Allah, forgive me. Oh Allah, forgive my wrongdoings. Oh Allah, forgive that which I have done, which I know and that which I don't know. He used to repeat different wordings of forgiveness and repentance up to 100 times a day. Brothers and sisters, be honest. How many times have you and I sought forgiveness today? I think the majority of us would say, not yet. Allahu Akbar. So if we get into this beautiful habit of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, of asking Allah's forgiveness, it will do a lot of good for us. Because, We need to know that a person who repents from a sin is equivalent to he who has never sinned. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. So much so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the beauty of forgiveness in the Quran. And we find him saying, إِلَّا مَنْ تَابَ وَآمَنَ وَعَمِلَ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا فَأُولَئِكَ يُبَدِّلُ اللَّهُ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ حَسَنَاتٍ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا After making mention of some of the sinful people and some of the sins that people engage in, and the type of punishment that will be multiplied for them, Allah says, except for those who repent and do good deeds. If you have these two conditions, repenting and doing good deeds, Allah says, we will delete those sins and in fact convert them into good deeds on the right side of the scale, such that when you and I arrive on the day of judgment, we will see so many good deeds that perhaps we may not have engaged in directly. Upon questioning, you will find out those were the sins that Allah has converted into good deeds because of two conditions. You sought forgiveness and after that you did good deeds. How many of us are ready to seek forgiveness and to do good deeds thereafter? Brothers and sisters, no matter what you've done in the past, never lose hope in the mercy of Allah. No matter how bad your past has been, there comes a day when you should change and so should I for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Life is not everlasting. But the life after death is indeed everlasting. So prepare for the life that is everlasting whilst you are in this temporary life. As we always say, Ad-dunya darul mamar wal akhiratu darul maqar fakhudu min mamarrikum limaqarrikum. The life of this world is just a pass, pastime. It's a place of passing. And the life of the hereafter is a place of everlast, everlasting. 
So take from your passing place that which will be beneficial for you in your everlasting place. Something common sense. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. May He make us strong and steadfast. Brothers and sisters, if this was the last day you were living, it would be in the best of your interests to go out to those whom you have wronged and so have I. And to ask them for forgiveness, whether they forgive you or not, is up to them. The fact that you have tried very humbly and you have said, my brother, my sister, my father, my mother, my wife, my brother, or my son, my daughter, and so on, my uncle and aunt, or my in-laws, I have wronged you in this way or in that way, please forgive me. I really plead with you. There will come a day that Allah has described in the Quran, يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٌ A day that wealth and children will not help you. Nothing will avail besides he who has arrived with a pure heart. May Allah grant us that pure heart. May Allah purify it for us. So brothers and sisters, do not be too proud to go out and ask those whom you have wronged for forgiveness. Even if it is a worker who has worked for you and you have spoken out loud to them. Take a look at Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's time when he was passing one of his companions who was beating a slave of his. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tapped him on the back. And as he turned around, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I would like you to know that the Almighty has greater power over you than you have over the slave of yours. He looked at Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam quite embarrassed. And at the same time, he was trembling in the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he said, O oh Messenger, I free him for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How many of us are ready to make peace with those whom we work with and for those who work for us or with those who work for us? Sometimes we take it for granted because the Almighty has placed them on a lower level than us, not realizing they may be in paradise before me and you. Take a look at Bilal ibn Rabah al-Habashi radiallahu an, how powerful a messenger he was. Yet earlier he was downtrodden by Umayyah ibn Khalaf and the others in Mecca. And yet when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came back from the Mi'raj, he looks at Bilal ibn Rabah radiallahu an, and he says, Oh Bilal, I heard your footsteps in paradise. Ya ilaha al-alamin. I heard your footsteps in paradise. Sometimes there are people who work for us who are more regular with their prayers than we are. Sometimes they are closer to Allah than we are. Brothers and sisters, if this was your last day, ask yourself, have I picked up the word of Allah to read it? How often do I read the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do I read the Quran on a daily basis? Do I try to understand what Allah has said? Sometimes we whip through the verses of the Quran without concentrating on the meaning, not realizing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed the Quran in order that it be a reminder for myself and yourselves and in order that we ponder over its verses in Surah Sad, Allah says, كتاب أنزلناه إليك مبارك ليدبروا آياته ليدبروا آياته وليتذكر أولو الألباب A book that we have revealed blessed in order that its verses be pondered over and that it may act as a reminder for those with sound intellect. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. Brothers and sisters, if this was your last day, how would we fulfill our own salah? Would we whip through it and dash through the sujood, the prostration, and the bowing, the rukur? Is that what we would do? I don't think so. If this was my last day, I would take my time in my prayer, and I would ensure that the prayer is done in a way that perhaps Allah take me away in the condition of sujood. May Allah grant that to us. Brothers and sisters, if you look at Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam statements, he says, Salli salata muwadda'in. Whenever you pray, you should pray as though that prayer is your last and final opportunity to pray. If that is the case, what would go wrong in your prayer? Brothers and sisters, sometimes we rush to the masjid and we rush out of the masjid quicker than we rushed to the masjid. If that is the case, surely. There is room for improvement. 
Brothers and sisters, sometimes we pick our heads on the ground as though we are doing a favor to our maker, not realizing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not need us or our acts of worship. It is us who need Allah. For every moment you spend in sujood and prostration, you are in actual fact the closest you ever could be to your own maker. Listen to the words, أَقْرَبُ مَا يَكُونُ الْعَبْدُ لِرَبِّهِ وَهُوَ سَاجِدٍ The closest that a slave can be to his maker is when he is in the condition of prostration. Now, will you rush through that prostration? Are you irritated with the creation, with the creator or with your link with the creator? Sometimes we read salah as though we are irritated with Allah. Na'udhu billah. May Allah protect us. We need to improve on that, my brothers and sisters. If we treat every single day of our lives as though it is going to be the last day that we are going to be given an opportunity to live, we will become much better people. Any and every opportunity, any and every opportunity to do a good deed shall be done. And any and every opportunity to abstain from a sin shall be done. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Another question, if today was the last day that you were to live, how would you eat and drink? It's interesting. We would definitely name Allah before we start eating. And we would not indulge in a way that we glut ourselves, that we can't even walk after we've eaten because we know I just need to eat a little bit to perhaps survive until the fixed time of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I will thank Him for my food and my drink. And at the same time, I will use the energy that I derive from the food and drink for something that will be meaningful in my life so it can help me in the hereafter. So brothers and sisters, whenever you are eating and drinking, if you are a believer and you feel that this is perhaps the last opportunity I will have to eat and drink, you will automatically fulfill the sunnah of thuluthun lil ta'am wa thuluthun lil sharab wa thuluthun lil nafas as the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam teaches us and he encourages us try to maintain a third for solids a third for liquids and a third for air amazing some people if we were to tell them if this was your last day what would you do they perhaps might tell you we would sin as much as we can meaning we would fulfill as many desires as we can because we only live once so we should enjoy it we have a new phenomenon on the globe which states you only live once or yolo that is void of belief a mu'min does not believe in that a mu'min a person who believes in allah realizes that life is a sacred gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a test and an examination. Just like when you enter an exam room, you cannot do anything that is against the examination board. You cannot cheat or deceive. The invigilators will perhaps catch you and you might be disqualified totally. So we have one huge examination center known as the dunya and every one of us are being carefully invigilated by the angels and other witnesses. And each one of us is worried we should not be disqualified from paradise. Ya Allah, grant it to us through your mercy. My brothers and sisters, we have so many gifts that Allah has blessed us, that He has not given others on the globe. We have food and clothing, we have accommodation, we have good limbs, mashallah, and good health. We need to ask ourselves, if this is my last day in this world, how have I reached out to the others who are going to remain on the globe after I leave? Today we have Muslims who are suffering across the globe, be it in Syria or Somalia be it in any other country like Burma or Bangladesh, how many of us have reached out to these people through our own pockets, through the little money that we have, through the wealth that we have. There are people as we are seated here who are dying of hunger across the globe. They are your brothers and sisters. If this was your last day, how did your millions help you? How did your thousands help you? If you could not spare perhaps a small percentage for those whom you might leave behind. Do you want your heirs to fight over your wealth after you leave? Well, go and study the lives of the wealthy. A lot of them across the globe, their wealth is being scrounged upon by their own heirs who, whom they have left behind. Some of them, brothers and sisters, who have stopped speaking to one another solely because the father was a rich man. Now that he passed away, they are fighting over his wealth. Better than all that would be if I could donate a little charity and I could teach my children to be donating as well and charitable people. 
For indeed, if I leave a child whom I have taught goodness, it will be of benefit for me. As you know, the narration of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam clearly says that a person who passes away, their deeds are cut off except for three. What are those three? A little child of theirs who prays for them. A charitable deed that continues in reward. Or a piece of knowledge that they have imparted. May the Almighty make us from any one of those three. And may He grant us from amongst those three. For indeed my brothers and sisters, today we have a notion that when someone passes away, we should all make dua for that person. Yes, we should. Sometimes after a person passes away, people will build a masjid on his name. People will drill boreholes on his name or her name. The question I have, what did you do in your life? That is the question. Why did you wait to die for others to do it on your name? Do it whilst you're alive. Allahu Akbar. You want to drill the boreholes? Get them done now. You want to do something, build a masjid? Get it done now. You want to be benevolent? Go ahead now. Don't wait to die and then people do it on your behalf. One wonders how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will look at those deeds. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. People ask a question. We want to read Quran because someone has passed away. Well, if they themselves never ever read the Quran, how then are you going to benefit them? If someone did not pray himself or herself, we will ask Allah to forgive them. But you cannot now pray on their behalf and say, do you know what? I will fulfill all the prayers that this person did not pray. If that was the case, would it be right for us to declare the shahada in place of someone who did not declare it in their lives? No. وَلَا تَزِرُ وَازِرَةٌ وِزْرَ أُخْرَىٰ No soul shall shoulder the burden of another. We need to know this. And this is why the Almighty is most merciful, most forgiving. Brothers and sisters, impart some goodness. If there is anything good you are planning to do, do it today. Don't wait for tomorrow. You may never see tomorrow. If there is anything bad you are planning to quit, quit it today. Whether it is a habit of a cigarette or a shisha or whatever else it is. That is considered minor by some, yet they are not minor. They are dangerous not only for your health, but even for your spirituality and your body. And for the day you meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, would you be proud of the fact that you have smoked away 500,000 boxes of Marlboro in your life? May Allah protect us. With that amount of money, perhaps we might have been able to assist 5,000 refugees who do not have homes today in Palestine. My brothers and sisters, let's reach out to one another. And one of the best points we can say, reach out to yourself. Reach out to the good inside you. Every one of us is made up of a lot of good and sometimes a little bit of bad as well. Some of us allow the bad to dominate in such a way that nobody can see the good in us. And some of us allow the good to dominate such that it eclipses the bad. I call on you and myself today to increase the good and to decrease the bad. Make it your business and mine to prepare for the day you meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why I started with a narration where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam speaks of al-kayyis. An intelligent person, an intellect, a sound, sharp person. Who is he? Is he the one who has a PhD, who can outwit others? Perhaps who can outdo others in terms of work and salary and so on. The hadith says, man dana nafsah. He is the one who recognizes who he is. He recognizes himself and he does deeds which will help him after death. An intelligent person is he who recognizes himself. How would you recognize yourself? Ask yourself, if I am 40 years old, for example, where was I 45 years ago? Don't stop until you find an answer. And then ask yourself, where are those who have passed away last year and the previous year? Where did they go? And ask yourself, can I avoid going where they went? You will answer these questions. And when you answer them, you will come to realize that life is so short that people who were more powerful than us and more wealthy than us, they had bigger physical build. They also died. And today they are not even available for us to speak to. هَلْ تُحِسُّ مِنْهُمْ مِنْ أَحَدٍ أَوْ تَسْمَعُ لَهُمْ رِكْزًا Do you feel any one of them? Any one of them? Do you feel their presence here? Or can you even hear a slight sound of theirs? They were more powerful than you. 
and they had much more wealth than you. They have all gone to meet their maker. So am I and so are you. There will come a day, 100 years from today, when nobody will know that we existed. There will come a time when our great grandchildren will not even know our name. Do you know that? And evidence for that, how many of you know your fifth generation grandfather? I think very few. Very few. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. So in the same way that five years before birth, we were not to be mentioned. Perhaps a hundred years after death, the bulk of us will never ever be mentioned again. Even our own progeny will never know that we existed. They might know that somewhere, somehow, I had a grandfather who came from this region of the world, but they won't be able to pinpoint. And the evidence for that is we, beyond a certain point, cannot pinpoint. And do you know what? As the years are passing, we are becoming more and more oblivious of who our fathers and grandfathers were. We are becoming people who are not even bothered with our own relatives. And we don't even know that this person is related to me. Yet we are supposed to be fulfilling their rights and duties. We are supposed to be looking after one another. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. Brothers and sisters, I have spoken. And I have tried to answer a question. If this was your last day, what would you do? How would you change your life? Brothers and sisters, repent for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For I seek repentance as well. And I ask the Almighty to forgive me and to forgive all the believers. And we ask the Almighty to grant us goodness and paradise and make us more conscious of our deeds. Brothers and sisters, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu had a statement that is recorded next to his name. He used to say, Hasibu anfusakum qabla an tuhasabu. Take account of your deeds before they are taken account of. And what this would mean is, make sure that you have a record of your deeds scattered with lots and lots of repentance before the Almighty takes a record of those deeds and you find, you find that you have deeds that you are embarrassed about. May the Almighty forgive us. The beauty, my brothers and sisters, to seek forgiveness, there are four conditions. If these four conditions are met, the sin is wiped out and deleted. Firstly, admit that you are wrong. Secondly, Regret the sin that you have committed. Thirdly, ask the Almighty to forgive you. And fourthly, promise not to do it again. The minute you meet these four conditions, there is no way that you will not be forgiven. But there is bad news as well. What is the bad news? If you have committed a sin against a fellow human being, there is one more condition and that is a fifth condition. What is that? You need to go to them and seek forgiveness. And that is not easy. Because Allah is Ghafoorul Rahim, most forgiving, most merciful. Fellow human beings are not Ghafoorul Rahim. They are not most forgiving, most merciful. So make sure that your link with fellow human beings is a link of goodness. And this is why when someone addresses you with ignorance, you need to just say peace and walk away as the Quran instructs us. Rather than start engaging them in discussion in a way that we begin to say hurtful words that might usurp their rights. وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا A true worshipper of Allah is he whom when he is addressed by the ignorant, he just says peace and walks away. He knows it is going to be futile, fruitless to engage in debate and discussion in certain quarters. So we ask the Almighty to make us from those who can take account of our own deeds and wherever you are going wrong, it is quite simple to put things straight. Seek forgiveness. Ask Allah and He will wipe out. Imagine, I'm not too sure about the policies of this particular country, but what I do know, in most countries you have a tax man who is very, very feared. Every little dollar that is earned has to be recorded. And if they catch you with a dollar you've earned which you, didn't, which you did not record, you shall be fined. People are so worried. They hire top accountants and they pay thousands of dollars in order that every dollar is accounted for in a way that we will be saved from undue and unnecessary embarrassment. Nobody is asking me or you to hire accountants and pay them thousands of dollars in order to teach us how to go into paradise and take account of our own deeds. We have lectures in the masajid. We have ulama, we have scholars, we have people who remind us of goodness. We have the Friday, we have so many other gifts of Allah. Today we have radio programs, we have so many other programs. The media is full of goodness as well. If you look for the right things, you will find it. If you are hunting for the wrong things, they will lead you astray. 
So brothers and sisters, in the same way that we are bothered about how every dollar must be accounted for by the, for the tax man of this world, we need to be bothered on a higher level of meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with correct accounts. And the beauty is, in this world, if you take your accounts and you present them, when you are wrong, you are penalized. When it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the minute you've seen that your accounts do not balance, you can balance them with tawbah, subhanallah. You can balance it with repentance. I said moments ago, no matter what you've done, my brother, no matter what you've done, my sister, in the past, let the past be the past. Turn a new leaf today. Become a better person. Give up your gambling. Give up your perhaps hooked, meaning if you are hooked onto something wrong, give it up. Whatever it is, whether it is adultery or pornography, anything else. The scourges of the age are plenty. There are so many to mention. I know and you know where our weaknesses are. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us all. Brothers and sisters, these reminders come now and again. For us to say that I will turn tomorrow is not good enough. If you are motivated now, say to yourself, I turn now to Allah. وَجَّهْتُ وَجْهِيَ لِلَّذِي فَطَرَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ حَنِيفًا وَمَا أَنَا مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ I have turned my face to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I have dedicated my entire life to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we are to leave the turning until tomorrow morning or until we go out of this house of Allah, the spirituality outside shall dilute the feeling that we feel right now in the house of Allah. The spirituality is high. We may, we may not hear another sermon because Allah might take us away before the end of today. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all and may He grant us goodness and ease.